Jaipur, the pink city, is our first destination. We flew into Delhi and our expedition began with a road journey to Jaipur. We spent a day sightseeing in Jaipur. We drove from our hotel to the pink old city, stopping to view Hawa Mahal. Next, we went to the Amber Fort and stopped at Mansagar Lake on our way to lunch. After lunch, we explored the city palace and then the Janta Mantua Observatory before returning to our hotel. We began our holiday in Delhi. Our driver picked us up and drove us to Jaipur. Our initial impression was that we would cruise through the open countryside to Jaipur. We were wrong. We soon met traffic with unusual driving etiquette. There were slow vehicles in all three lanes and vehicles overtook and undertook with much sounding of horns. There were even some drivers going the wrong way in the outside lane. The route is an industrial corridor with commercial buildings and brickworks along it. We stopped halfway for lunch, a tasty veg curry. Indian palm squirrels were on the lookout for scraps. Underway again, and we encounter other road hazards, cattle yeah. and donkeys and monkeys. <laughs> After five and a half hours and 240 kilometers, we reach Jaipur and our hotel. Next morning, after an early breakfast, we were met by our 80-year-old guide, Radhi. I'm a tour guide, myself, Radhi. We began by driving to the old city. pink city. And now city. see the silent city, means nothing open now. But and after that, you get crowded. The old city was originally painted terracotta by Maharaja Ram Singh of Jaipur in preparation for the visit in 1879 by the Prince of Wales and Queen Victoria. And the main entrance for the Maharaja. Hawa Mahal, crossing the road for a better view, was quite challenging. 152 windows with exquisite fine screens, built in 1799. Hawa Mahal is part of the city palace complex, we shall visit later. We're heading north to the Amber Palace, the North Gate. The factories are here situated, that's why Jaipur should not be... The Queen's cremation house, Jal Mahal. Our first sight of the Amber Fort and Jaigar Fort above it on the hilltop. On the approach to the fort, we visited this traditional step well. Water is low after two monsoon failures. Nearly there. Elephant transport is available to the first courtyard, but we walked the view back to the well. Here's the first courtyard. Elephants climb the hill, enter this gate, and deliver their passengers. We climb the steps to the second courtyard from which we had a, a good view of the first courtyard and the elephants and the formal gardens and their largely dried up lake. Ornate arches lined one side of the courtyard and the Maharaja's public audience hall was in the centre. Opposite was the magnificent entrance to the Maharaja's private quarters. These 
her original decorations. Passing into the Maharaja's palace, we see even more elaborate original decorations in the passage that leads to the third courtyard. Here, there are two buildings separated by a garden. At one side is Sukh Mahal, which is cooled by running water, and at the other side is Jaya Mandir, or the Mirror Palace. The fourth courtyard. The twelve Queen's rooms. And upstairs is the Maharaja's room. The ornately decorated room of Queen number four. Windows allowed the Queens to look out without being seen. Another ornate ceiling. Enormous cooking pots. We leave the amber fort behind and head for town. The first stop was Mansagar Lake, home to Jalmahal Palace and many birds. Our guide took us on to see traditional hand printing of fabrics. And then on to lunch. After lunch, we headed for the seven-storey city palace, puppet street traders. The city palace, the Serato Badra, with its enormous silver urns, used by the Maharaja to take Ganges water to England. We passed through the magnificent bronze doors and then into the seven-storey Chandra Mahal. We begin on the fourth floor in Chavi Nivas. Prince Charles and Camilla spend their honeymoon. It's a little bit more decorated for them than for us. On the next floor was the sumptuous mogul artwork of Sri Nivas. A sparkling combination of gold and mirrors. This residence sparkles even in the dark. The top floor gave us views over the city. There's Jantabanto, a distant hilltop fort. Another opulent residence, Soba Nivas, where we have the opportunity to relax like royalty. the Maharaja's private quarters. His bedroom. And dressing room. Back to the courtyard. We were not allowed to video the state rooms that opened onto it. We finished with a cup of tea before moving on to the Jantua Mantua Observatory. Janta Manta, dating from the early 1700s, has 20 fixed instruments measuring positions of the sun, moon, planets and constellations of the zodiac. Its largest instrument, the sundial, is accurate to within two seconds. 
that's the end of our day. Thanks again to Radhi for his guidance. Sixty-one, I have started to guide the job and I have done it more than 40 years for the escorting all over Rajasthan. Now I'm a personal guide of Marjav Jaipur and I'm working here. I'm 80 years old man. I got three awards by the government of India, best guide. I'm a guide lecturer and I learn a lot from the tourists.